everybody. This is the Liturgy of the Word for Thursday in the 25th week of Ordinary Time. Let's sing, Lord, I Need You. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing near, I find my rest. Without Everybody, welcome to um, Thursday of the 25th week of Ordinary Time. Thank you very much for joining us. And as I begin today, uh, we begin to read from the book of Ecclesiastes. There's, a, there's an interesting one, but I want you to pay, Dan's going to read from that, and I want you to pay particular attention to him because I'd like to you know, talk a little bit about that today as we go forward. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Let's ask God for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way, Lord, have mercy. You are the truth, Christ, have mercy. And you are the life, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and love of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Koheleth, vanity of vanities. All things are vanity. What profit has man from all the labor which he toils at under the sun? One generation passes and another comes, but the world forever stays. The sun rises and the sun goes down, then it presses on to the place where it rises. Blowing now toward the south, then toward the north, the wind turns again and again, resuming its rounds. All rivers go to the sea, Yet never does the sea become full. To the place where they go, the rivers keep on going. All speech is labored. There is nothing one can say. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor is the ear satisfied with hearing. What has been, that will be. What has been done, that will be done. Nothing is new under the sun. Even the thing of which we say, see, this is new, has already existed in the ages that preceded us. There is no remembrance of the men of old, nor of those to come will there be any remembrance among those who come after them. The Word of the Lord. <laughs>
turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. In every age, you have been our refuge. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Prosper the work of our hands for us, Prosper the work of our hands. In every age, you have been our refuge. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Herod the Tetrarch heard all about all that was happening, and he was greatly perplexed because some were saying John has been raised from the dead. Others were saying Elijah has appeared. So others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. But, but Herod said, John I beheaded. Who is this about whom I have heard such things? And he kept on trying to see Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, let's do a little talking about Koheleth here and the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, if there's ever a book in the Bible that you're saying, how did this one ever make the cut? That would be Ecclesiastes. It has got to be one of the strangest and oddest uh, books in the Bible that you would think oftentimes should not be here. He calls himself Koheleth. Koheleth simply means teacher. And probably written about 200, 300 years uh, before Jesus. And it's, one of the, it's part of the wisdom literature, of course. And Koheleth is asking the great big question, what is the meaning of life? And uh, he goes on to say, much of it is rather useless, vanity of vanities, which we hear over and over again in our first reading today. He tr he's tried to find meaning in, in knowledge, in various lifestyles, in pleasure, in wine, in business, in property, in love, food, sex, all the things that we try to find meaning in our life with. And all of it seems to be useless to him. He's tried them all, and they are useless very wisely. And the real meaning of life is in none of those things. And he would say, as Augustine says, our hearts are restless until they rest in God. That's precisely what Koheleth would say. Now, Writing about that, uh, and Father uh, Ronald Rohatch's book, The Holy Longing, which is, again, one of the books that if you're really looking for something to read, that you want to get a, a, a much more comprehensive look at spirituality, this is the one I would recommend first. 
And in the very first chapter, he asks the question, what is spirituality? And he answers the question like this. Whatever the expression, everyone is ultimately talking about the same thing, Koheleth included, an unquenchable fire, a restlessness, a longing, a disquiet, a hunger, a loneliness, a gnawing nostalgia, a wildness that cannot be tamed, a congenital all-embracing ache that lies at the center of human existence, and it is the ultimate force that drives everything. This dis-ease is universal. Desire gives no exemptions. And then he goes on to say, spirituality is what we do about this desire. And then he quotes, Rohazer does, Augustine himself. You have made us for yourself, Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Spirituality is what we do with the unrest. I think Koheleth would say the same thing. Spirituality begins with what we do with the unrest. Then it kind of grows and develops from there. So Gehelf is saying the same thing as Roheiser, saying the same thing as Augustine. Uh, um, our only hope, our purpose, our meaning, the answer to our restlessness is found in God. Folks, have you figured that out yet? That your restlessness, your struggle was found in God. It's interesting that um, we come to that realization oftentimes very late in our lives. We, we, we go to God for our answers after we try just about everything else. But Koheleth and Roheiser and Nagasin are saying the same thing. That's where the answers are to be found. Here's our questions for today, and they both are about the gospel. Why do you think people confuse Jesus with John and Elijah? And secondly, why do you think Herod wanted to see Jesus? Maybe he was restless. I was looking for something to touch the restlessness in his heart. God bless you and see you again tomorrow.